Hi everyone, the purpose of this lesson is to give you a brief introduction to some of the features of Visual Studio. Microsoft's Visual Studio is, is the integrated development environment, or IDE, used to build C Sharp and .NET applications. And IDEs are, uh, they're, they're probably new to you, and while they can seem like just a tool, like just a code editor, there's so much more. So uh, IDEs typically combine a lot of different tools and applications and, and sort of glue them together in a way that makes your um, your experience as a programmer a lot easier. It makes it easier for you to do your work, it makes it more efficient, it makes it easier for you to find problems with your code and just to just generally solve the problems that you're working on with code. So don't think of IDEs as you know just a code editor. Think of them as a tool that will help you do your job better. So just a few of the things that an IDE can do. Uh, one is it's gonna help us with version control using Git. We'll explore that in detail in this lesson. It will also um, help us build and run our code. So that's another feature that we'll use uh, pretty much every single day we work on code. Um, another feature we'll use later on is dependency management. So the IDE will help us obtain and properly build um, external assemblies or external programs that we want to use within our C Sharp and .NET applications. And then another crucial feature of IDEs is debugging. So we're going to explore debugging in detail um, in, in a lesson right after this one. All right, well, let's get started with just some of the basics of how to go about using um, the, the basic functionality of Visual Studio. So the first thing I want to do is to create a new project or a solution, as they're called in, um, in the .NET world. So I'm going to go to File and select New Project. And then, um, you know, in this, in this modal that comes up, there's a lot of options here. We're always going to be working below the Visual C Sharp menu on the left. These are just going to... this, this um, this, this pane gives us a lot of different options on types of projects we can create, and these are basically going to result in templates for the projects that we create. So we want to choose appropriately here so that we start off with the right project template. All right, so for this walkthrough and for the first um, couple of weeks of the class at least, we're going to be creating predominantly console applications. So I'm going to select Visual C Sharp .NET Core, and then from that group of project templates, I'm going to collect, select console application. Now down below, don't forget to name your project something. This is just gonna be a simple demo. So let me say, um, Visual Studio Demo. We'll uh, frequently follow this naming convention for our projects and a lot of other things. This is called Pascal case. Uh, there's, there's no um, dashes or underscores here and the first letter of every word is capitalized with all other letters lowercase. Okay, make sure that it's in the right location that you like there. That's good, that looks good to me. The solution is gonna be given the same name as the, the project. That's generally what we want as well. And then these two checkboxes are, are good to have checked as well. This will create a new local Git repository for my project. And this will create a directory for my project to live within. Okay, once I select okay, Visual Studio is gonna go do the work of uh, fetching that template and putting everything in place, creating all the new files, initializing the Git repository, and just generally get everything ready for me to work on the project. All right, so here we go with, um, all right, it's gonna open up the program.cs file, and uh, this is pretty much what we've got. So look over here in the left-hand pane, you can browse around. The most important things for us here right now are just the, the fact that we have this Visual Studio demo in the source folder and program.cs down below. So that is the, uh, the basic structure we're gonna be given, and we're just given um, the, just a minimal program here with just a single public static void main. All right, so uh, let's see. The first thing I wanna do before I go any farther is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to publish your new project to GitHub. So um, this assumes you've already set up GitHub within Visual Studio, so um, we had you do that when you set up Visual Studio initially. And so I'm going to do, um, what I'm going to do is go over here to the Team Explorer, and it's right, generally right next to the Solution Explorer. If you don't see Team Explorer here, you can also find it by going to View and Team Explorer, all right? Within the Team Explorer, um, if you ever get lost in here and, and end up going down some rabbit hole and aren't sure how to get out, you can always just click on the Home menu, and that'll bring you back to this main display. Okay, so I haven't made any changes yet, um, but let me go to the, the Connections, and, um, well, actually, sorry, not the connections, not quite yet. Let's look at sync. So sync is going to allow us to sync our local repository to remote repositories. 
Okay, this, this particular repository for this particular project is not yet connected to a remote repository. So uh, instead of being able to directly publish those changes or sync my changes, I'm presented with a bunch of options on ways to publish. So in particular, I just wanna use publish to GitHub right here. So uh, once again, Visual Studio has stored the connection information for my GitHub account. And so when I publish to GitHub, it's gonna be able to do that without any further authentication. And here you can um, you know, change the name of your project if you don't want the GitHub project to match your local project, although you usually will. And uh, you can go ahead and hit publish. Okay, so now let me just go show you that that, that actually worked. I'm gonna go here to my GitHub profile and um, go to the repositories page. And right there, Visual Studio Demo updated just now. So that did indeed publish to my GitHub profile. Okay, so let's go back. Let's do a couple things. Let's just make a quick change and go through the mechanics of committing and pushing that change remotely or to, uh, to, to uh, our remote repository. So I'm just gonna do just, you know, some simple uh, hello world type thing here. All right, so um, before I publish that change or commit it, I just wanna go ahead and make sure my code runs. We haven't done anything complicated, but you should always uh, commit code that works. So I'm gonna hit the Visual Studio demo run button up here, and it will go ahead and start the build and then launch the application once it's done building. We can see the output of the build here down below. So usually that's gonna be, you know, not nothing in particular special for us to look at, but uh, if you have problems, um, with your build or the startup of your application, you'll often see messages down there that are relevant. Okay, so there we go, program worked. Everything's good and um, great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and commit and push these changes. So let me go back to the Team Explorer. And when I'm ready to commit, I wanna go to the Changes menu item under Project here in the Team Explorer. This will let me preview all of the changes between the last commit I made and the current state of my application. In particular, all I have right here is this one changed file. If I wanna see exactly what those changes are, I can double click on it and it will show me precisely what those changes are, which is uh, sometimes a good useful, good useful feature. All right, that looks good. That's what I expected them to be. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna enter a brief message. And this button commit all has a drop down with multiple options. You can just commit changes to your local repository. That's the first option. You can um, commit to your local repository and push the remote, or you can commit to the local and sync with your remote, which would pull down changes from the remote. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and select commit all and push. All right, so once that's done, we see the Team Explorer doing some work. Once it's done, we'll see a message successfully published to Origin Master. Remember, Origin is just GitHub's name for your remote repository. And again, if we go up here and look at this, we see in my commit history that that most recent commit right there made it up to GitHub. Okay, so that's great. So that's how, the, that's how you go through the mechanics of making changes, committing and pushing those to GitHub for a project. Often though, especially in this skill track, you're going to be starting with starter code that we give you. Okay, so let's kind of go through those mechanics as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this project out, close the solution out rather, by going to File, Close Solution. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to um, my File Explorer and I'm gonna go just delete it off my disk. Okay, so basically what I just did, is I just deleted it. That way I can just pull it down from GitHub and show you how that cloning process works within Visual Studio. Okay, so um, let me go to Team Explorer and let's see, there we go, I'm home. That's where I wanted to be. So let me go to the, uh, the connections pane. And here I see the different repositories that Visual Studio is aware of. These are all, um, local repositories, okay? So here, I'm gonna go to the GitHub section of this and say that I wanna clone a GitHub repository from my GitHub account. So you'll probably only see one of these. These are different uh, GitHub organizations that that uh, I'm a member of. You'll probably only see your one user account there. Go ahead and expand that or you can search either way. 
Okay, so I'm going to clone this one. And be careful here, this is generally not going to be what you want it to be. So uh, make sure you set the path for where you want that project to be stored. Not quite that one. There we go. Okay, then I hit clone, and it's going to clone that repository to my local environment and go ahead and uh, give me this message here. And if I click on this, it's going to go ahead and take me to the open solution dialog for this particular project. So to open a solution, you can always open a solution in Visual Studio by just double clicking, um, well, by selecting the, the projects.sln file. All right, so there we go. So here's my solution, and it's just as we left it. Great, and then once you have that project cloned, you can go about your business of, of uh, you know, committing and pushing in the same way that we did previously. So one more thing I wanna show you before we conclude this lesson is I wanna show you a little trick that can help you with uh, some frustrations um, in terms of running projects and running particular programs early on. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a project that, oops, that's the wrong, wrong, the wrong um, menu item. I'm gonna go to open, project solution. I'm gonna open the C-sharp exercises project. I'm opening this one because I know that it has a lot of different projects within it. So re recall that the hierarchy of uh, solutions here is that um, an overall group of projects is called a solution. So we're typically opening and working with a solution in Visual Studio, but we can have sub projects within that solution. So in this case, my solution has multiple projects within it. And each one of these projects has its own main method. So each one has a program.cs file right there and right there, you see for those two. And each one of those program.cs files has a main method, all right? So when you go to run these, uh, you will hit this run button up here. But if yours doesn't look like this, notice that whichever project I select in the left-hand pane is going to change the state of this run button, right? I go to day printer, it changes the run button to day printer. All right, this is not um, typically the default behavior for Visual Studio. So um, what you will often see is a drop-down menu to select the program you wanna run and then the run button off to the side. So this is a nice thing to be able to do to just have Visual Studio always be aware of which program you're currently um, working on, which you, that you have currently selected, and it can just automatically run that one. So I'll show you how to um, enable that setting. Go to Tools and Options. Actually, this is not the right location. Hold on one second. So, yeah, okay, so here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, go to Solution, right-click click on Solution, and select Properties. Now within this properties dialog, this is um, one of these two is probably what you have selected. Go ahead and, and choose the current selection. This is the one that will sort of auto select the project you currently are working on to run within Visual Studio. Hit apply and okay, and you're good to go. That's it. Good luck using Visual Studio as you learn to code C-sharp and .NET.